Hi guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with AP Physics 1. We're doing some um, circular motion problems here. Um, I want to remind you guys to just, I encourage you to pause the video, try the problem yourself, you know, read through it, try to work it out, and come once you've done that, then come back and watch the video and see how, what your work compared to mine was. An object of mass m on a string is whirled with increasing speed in a horizontal circle as shown above. When the string breaks, the object has speed v0 and the circular path is a radius r and, a, and is a height h above the ground and neglect air fit friction. Determine the following expressions in terms of h, v0, and g. The time required for the object to hit the ground after the string breaks. The horizontal distance the object travels from the time the string breaks until it hits the ground and the speed of the object before it hits the ground. Okay, So the time for it to hit the ground, well let's see. If I'm hmm, swirled in a horizontal circle, oh, this is, this is a tough question. Okay, we're going in a horizontal circle. So um, its velocity is, okay, so the timer to hit the ground. So w when it's moving around like this, it has no vertical velocity, right? Because it's going in a horizontal circle. Okay, it has a V naught. So, um, Whenever you want to know when it hits the ground, you got to look at the y direction, the vertical direction. And the kinematic equation we're going to use is delta, the displacement is equal to v naught t plus one half a t squared. Now, delta x or the displacement we know is h because that's how far we want it to go. It's equal to it has no initial vertical velocity. See, it has initial velocity, but it's like perpendicular to the the y axis. Um, so that's zero, and so it's one half g um, times t squared. So t would equal 2 square root of 2gh. Okay. So that's how long it's in the ground. The horizontal distance the object travels from the time the string breaks until it hits the ground. Well, in the horizontal direction, it's moving at a velocity v naught. And so it's dealt, and it has no acceleration. So it's just equal to this. Like no acceleration, so this term is 0. But we're doing it in the horizontal direction. So our distance um, is just v naught times this time, which is how long it was in the air for. Okay, so that's it's that's number two. The speed of the object just before it hits the ground. Now, by the time it hits the ground, it has velocity. Like if I think about it, let's say it was cut here um, because I could draw it. Then it's going to go like this. Okay, now. It's at this point, its x velocity is still v naught, but now it has a vertical velocity too. And to sum these two out, I, I want this v is equal to the square root of v naught in the x squared plus v y squared. It's the it's the it's the mag, it's the length because if I draw the vector like this, you know, I got to do this squared plus this squared equals that squared by Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. um, its velocity in the x doesn't change. So that's just v naught squared. Its velocity in the y direction, well, it started off 0. And by the time it hit here, we can use this equation. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Well, I know the initial acceleration was 0 plus acceleration. So initial velocity is 0. So acceleration is g and t is square root of 2gh, because that's how long it was in the air for. Um, and that it would equal vy. So vy squared is equal to um, g squared times 2gh, which is equal to um, 2g cubed h. This is plus 2g cubed h. Okay, so that's that's the magnitude of its velocity right there, which is the speed. On the figure below, draw and label the forces acting on the object when it is in the position shown in the diagram above. So when it's here, it has gravity, and it has this force here, the force of tension. And the, you see the ropes at an angle, theta relative to uh, the horizontal. And that's it. Those are the total forces. It's just got the rope pulling on it, and it's got gravity pulling on it. It's got that and that. Determine the tension of the string just before the string breaks and express your answers m, r, v, naught, and g. Well, we have to do um, uh, net force equations. And I'm going to do the y direction first. 
because I want to see how that helps. See, I can split up this force into both the x and the y direction. Okay, so this is ft, this is theta, so this is ft cosine theta, this part is ft sine theta. So in the y direction, ft sine theta is equal to mg, uh, which I would say is capital G. But you see, I can't do it in terms of, th so I could solve for ft, it's equal to mg over sine theta, right? But I don't actually know what theta is. They want it in terms of these variables. So then I want to look at the x direction. x direction, I just have ft cosine theta. And that has to equal the centripetal acceleration, which would be m v naught squared over r, right? m a which is the a is centripetal acceleration because that it is feeling a net acceleration a net net centripetal acceleration um so i can replace let me see what we could do here um, what's the easiest way to solve for ft the the most direct way would be um I solve for theta and plug it into here and solve for ft, but that's not like super good. Um, I could certainly solve for theta, but I'm not really interested in what theta is. So what I'll do is this. This equation I can rearrange to say cosine theta is equal to uh, 1 over ft m v naught squared over r. No, actually, I'm going to do it the other way. Sorry. Oops. I'm trying to decide which one I want to solve for. This one I'm going to say sine theta is equal to mg over ft. Now I want to convert this to cosine theta, really, and um, this is more of a math problem than it is a physics problem. Because I would do if I had numbers, I would do sine inverse of that, then put in the cosine there, and then and then I would kind of be done. But there's sort of a a simpler, more elegant way to. Um, well, then I would have trouble solving for ft, so the tension force. So that's why I don't really want to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for theta instead because I can do that a little more easily. Okay. I'm and then plug it into one. I'm going to divide these two, so I get sine theta, or ft sine theta, over ft cosine theta is equal to mg over m v naught squared over r. The m's cancel, and I this is r g over v naught squared. Okay, and this cancels, and this is actually equal to tangent of theta. Okay, so um, this is tangent of theta, and I want to figure out what. And one of the way, one of the ways I do this is I, I look at a right triangle and I say, well, if this is theta, and tangent of theta is R G over V naught squared, so opposite over adjacent, this is R G over V naught squared. This side becomes the square root of V naught squared squared v naught to the fourth plus r squared g squared okay by Py by pythagorean theorem and so then i can solve for this one um ft is equal to mg over sine theta sine of theta is this opposite over adjacent so it would be mg over sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse so that's rg over the square root of v naught to the fourth plus r squared g squared. That's equal to, um, the g's are gonna cancel here. So I'm gonna have m square root v naught to the fourth plus r squared g squared over r. That would be my expression here. That's a kind of a tricky one to solve for that. A lot of, a lot of like trig and algebra to solve that one. Uh, any way to simplify that? No, I don't think so. 
Um, yeah, I would just leave it like that. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys found that helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.